So there are two different approaches you can use during uh, selection of a suitable column for your HPLC method. One can be empirical which is purely based on to the experiment's outcome and second can be theoretical which is based on to the stationary phase chemistry as well as your molecules chemistry. So in today's video we are going to talk about how one can use the theoretical approach for selection of the suitable HPLC column during the method development. And sure, you know, once you uh, eye upon this suitable column, you need to confirm it with the suitable experiment. So let us begin with the presentation now, how this theoretical approach can help you out in selecting the suitable HPLC column. And here we go with the presentation. So as a part of this presentation, I would like you to first understand, you know, what is the most important aspect is about the functional groups present into your molecule and how they interact with the stationary phase. So in case of the methylene chain, RCH2, then further another uh, groups, the this functional groups is very, has very low polarity or it is almost a non-polar functional groups and it can interact with the stationary phase with the London dispersion forces mode. So for all non-polar molecules, the, the force of, uh, you know, uh, or the mechanism by which the retention can happen mostly gets governed by the London dispersion forces. In case of phenyl, you know, then again the London dispersion forces, but there still there will be a small amount of pi pi interaction can also contribute for the retention of the compound halide is uh, you know fluorine chlorine bromine these all groups are very polar in the nature and that can bring the dipole dipole interaction because these are highly electronegative atoms so in case if a molecule has the halide uh, atoms your molecule can interact with the stationary phase by the means of dipole dipole interaction with the addition of London dispersion forces because of this methylene or the uh, carbonyl chain uh, not carbonyl chain but the carbon chain ether ROR so oxygen is also highly electronegative atom and that also can bring the uh, dipole dipole interaction and plus the London dispersion forces because of this alkane groups present on both the sides of oxygen in addition to that this oxygen can also form the hydrogen bond with the another compound if that compound has the hydrogen present onto it so the ether can get retained onto your uh, stationary phase by London dispersion forces by dipole dipole interaction and even by hydrogen bonding Nitro. Nitro is again very polar functional groups. Nitrogen is highly electronegative atom. So the dipole-dipole interaction is going to happen. Hydrogen bonding, right, is possible and the London dispersion forces because of the alkane chain. Easter, London dispersion forces, dipole-dipole interaction and the hydrogen bonding. Aldehydes, all three, London dispersion forces, dipole-dipole interaction and the hydrogen bonding. That ketone, the same London dispersion forces because of the alkane chain, dipole, dipole because of what? The oxygen, which is highly electronegative atom. Similarly, hydrogen bond also can get formed with the oxygen present onto the ketone functional groups. Amino can have a can get retained based onto the London dispersion forces because of what? The alkane chain. Because alkane is highly non-polar chain and that can interact with the stationary phase by the mechanism of London dispersion forces. Dipole-dipole interaction is because of what? The presence of nitrogen in the amino. Hmm? The hydrogen bonding. This nitrogen can also form hydrogen bond with the compound that can have the hydrogen atom present onto it. And then the acid-base chemistry because the amine is the basic in the nature. So in, in case if your stationary phase has some acidic functional groups, then the acid-base chemistry can also play a very important role. The hydroxyl, the ROH, again the R can bring the London dispersion forces. Oxygen, which is highly electronegative atom, can bring the dipole-dipole interaction and it also forms the hydrogen bond with the another compound having hydrogen atom. And lastly, the carboxylic acid, London dispersion force because of the alkane chain dipole dipole because of what because of the oxygen atoms present inside the carboxylic 
functional groups hydrogen bonding then acid base chemistry so these are the primary uh, uh, fun these are the primary uh, reasons why your compound can get retained onto the stationary phase i hope you must have understood this slide slide is very important slide now let us understand with the help of actual practical examples and suppose you have to separate prednisolone and prednisone your interested compound is what prednisolone and prednisone so let us first understand what is the the chemical structure of these two interested molecules prednisolone and the prednisone so once you understand that the next important step is you need to circle the structure features that differ you need to identify what are the structural features or what are the functional groups which are not in common in these two molecules because see you need to understand some differences because you need to retain them at the different retention time and you need to understand what what are the differences these two molecules have so identify the differences now you identified that in one prednisolone compound this hydroxyl group present right whereas in prednisolone this carbonyl group is present so you identified now this two differences right uh, as per as their structural features are concerned so let us further understand okay if these are our interested compounds prednisolone and prednisone and these are our most widely used stationary phases the first one is alkyl bonded stationary phase like c8 or c18 second one is amide then the phenyl pentafluorophenyl pfp then cyano which is very highly polar in the nature and then lastly the silica hmm? unbonded stationary phase so let us try to you know understand analyze how the retention of prednisolone and prednisone will get happen on to the c8 or c18 stationary phases we know that the c8 c18 stationary phases are highly non polar in the nature they are highly hydrophobic in the nature and they are only going to retain highly hydrophobic or non polar molecules so does our molecules are hydrophobic or non polar just have a look there are many uh, uh, pi bonds double bond in the conjugation there are highly electronegative atoms like oxygen present Hmm? and this will make these two compounds not polar but highly uh, not non polar but highly polar in the nature so both of them are highly polar in the nature so the carbon the c8 or c18 is never going to be a the choice of your stationary phase you will end up getting almost same retention time for both the prednisolone and prednisone and even the retention time will be very very less because there are very likely less chances of interaction of both this compound with the alkyl bonded stationary phase let us understand what is going to happen in case if you think about the amide stationary phase see the amide stationary phase is having uh, the uh, capacity to form the hydrogen bond because of this nitrogen look at here because of this nitrogen this amide can form the hydrogen bond right it is also polar in the nature so the amide phase is going to get interacted with the polar compounds like prednisolone and prednisone now the beauty is in case of formation of hydrogen bond which compound can form the hydrogen bond with the amide stationary phase look at here prednisolone has the hydrogen available with the oxygen but in case of prednisone this hydrogen is missing over here so that this hydroxyl group can have greater amount of interaction with the amide stationary phase and because of its overall polarity you will get the retention time of both this compound to a very good extent for the longer time but in addition the prednisolone can get extra interaction because of the formation of hydrogen bond so you can always think of selection of amide phase for separating your prednisolone and prednisone mixture let us think about what will happen in case if you choose phenyl as your stationary phase the phenyl column see the phenyl column uh, the phenyl ring is lewis base hmm? the phenyl ring is the lewis base and it can interact on the uh, mechanism of pi pi interaction and also with the hydrogen bonding interaction 
so in case in case of prednisolone you have this hydrogen uh, available over here and in prednisone there is no hydrogen available likely there is a chance that your phenyl column can have the better interaction with the prednisolone and less interaction with the prednisone so by that way you can achieve the separation between these two compounds but the phenyl is not that strongly polar in the nature so that the overall retention time can be poor the overall retention time for both prednisolone and prednisone can be poor and because of that probably phenyl may not be the preferred choice of your stationary phase now what is going to happen with the pfp the pentafluorophenyl this pentafluorophenyl is a highly polar stationary phase because there are five different phenyl compounds fluorine compounds flu fluorine atoms and the fluorine is highly electronegative atoms and it can attract the polar compounds very strongly so you can see a strong dipole dipole interaction because of the pfp and your compounds are also highly polar so there is a likely chance of the pfp will get the good amount of retention time for both of these compounds now what will be the separate what will be the point of resolution hmm? now look at here there is a oh over here now which can form the hydrogen bond with the fluorine atom and that's the reason probably the pentafluorophenyl can be a better choice can be a better choice in case of you are looking for the good amount of retention as well as the separation for your prednisolone and prednisone compound next column is the cyano column and cyano we all know it is a highly polar column so it can be a good choice it can be a good choice because your compounds are highly polar and this nitrile functional groups the nitrile functional groups can also form the hydrogen bond and in one compound there is no hydrogen atom available over here in the inside the ring prednisone and prednisolone has the required hydrogen bond capacity so because of that the cyano can also become the preferred choice of your stationary phase and finally the silica silica we all know it is a highly polar stationary phase and these are the polar compounds so the silica can also become the preferred choice but you probably may have to operate into the normal phase mode even in case of uh, silica uh, you will always get the good amount of retention for both the compounds because of their highly polarity in the nature i hope now this is clear to you so let us take the another example and in this case i have taken toluene and ethyl ethyl benzene as the uh, two different compound that you are going to separate so look out for the differences you know what are the differences in between the toluene and ethyl benzene and it is nothing but the the alkane chain so there is extra ch2 unit available onto the ethyl benzene hmm? ethyl benzene there is additional C ch2 unit and what the ch2 brings what the alkane chain brings alkane chain brings the hydrophobicity nature so let us understand now which stationary phase is going to be a preferred one the alkyl bonded c8 or c18 in this case we know that now this stationary phase covers the retention based on to the hydrophobicity and this is the differences right the hydrophobicity of toluene and ethyl benzene are different and hence the c8 or c18 can be a preferred stationary phase for the separation amide probably may not uh, but the advantage with the amide can be you know look at here amide also brings the hydrophobicity because of this long alkane chain but over c8 or c18 amide is not the preferred one amide can be the second stationary phase even phenyl is a polar in the nature and may not be suitable pfp no question it is highly polar in the nature and may not help you out in resolving toluene and ethyl benzene cyano no question not needed to even think of because it is also a highly polar stationary phase it is not going to help you in resolving these two compounds silica not needed to be explored so this is the way we understand that in the toluene and ethyl benzene separation your c8 and c18 stationary phases are going to help you because they brings a required hydrophobic interaction let us understand little, uh, little complex scenario where you have now these six different compounds hmm, and this is a mixture you want to separate out. 
So what you have to do now, you need to understand what is the challenge I have. See the compounds with different functional groups. Hmm? They are likely to get separated easily. But the compounds with the similar functional groups, similar kind of structure, they are going to pose challenges during the separation. So identify, identify what are those two different molecules which are very much similar structurally. And you will find that these are the two different molecules which are structurally quite similar, hmm? which are quite structurally similar. And once you identify these two molecules, the next episode, then identify what are the differences into their functional groups. Because you need to target again, what are the different functional groups they have? Because the functional groups can help you out in separating them because of different interaction. So now these are the uh, functional groups which are not similar hmm, in both the compounds. So let us again go back to our uh, stationary phases with the, the compound of interest. So what is going to happen now? Now this alkyl bonded stationary phases, they are governing the retention onto the hydrophobic properties of the molecules. But do you think that these molecules are hydrophobic in the nature? They are very much hydrophilic. They are polar in the nature and probably because of that your C8 or C18 may not be the preferred choice. Amide, yes, the amide can work with the, uh, the amide can help in retaining the polar functional groups. Uh, amide can help in retaining the polar functional groups and you may get some amount of support because of the amide. As if you look at over here, now this compound number one can form the hydrogen bond. This NH2, hmm, this NH2, uh, this hydrogen can form the hydrogen bond with the amide stationary phase. And because of that, it can get it can get longer retention time as compared to your second compound. So you can think about amide as the preferred stationary phase. When it comes to phenyl, uh, the phenyl can also help uh, out over here because you know in case of the compound number one there is a presence of phenyl ring whereas there is no presence of phenyl ring in the compound number two so there can be a phenyl pi pi interaction possible with the phenyl column and you may get good amount of retention right for compound number one and because of its polarity the phenyl ring also brings the dipole dipole interaction you may end up getting the good amount of retention for the compound number two also but think about the pfp the pentafluorophenyl it is something very interesting you will get the benefit of you know having the uh, the pi pi interaction between these two phenyl rings of compound one and the pentafluorophenyl stationary phase it can also form the hydrogen bond with the nh2 so this compound number one can have the greater affinity toward the pentafluorophenyl stationary phase and you will end up getting the high resolution for compound one and two if you think of using pentafluorophenyl as the stationary phase. The, the another one is the cyano. The cyano is again very interesting stationary phase in this case because it is also a highly polar stationary phase in the nature and our compounds are highly polar. See the cyano can definitely bring the dipole-dipole interaction for sure, but it can also bring the hydrogen bonding interaction with the compound number one because compound number one has this NH2 functional groups and this NH2 hydrogen present over here can form the hydrogen bond with C triple bond N. So that way, I think the cyano can be going to be very interesting stationary phase to try out. Uh, silica may not be the preferred one because you may have to go with the uh, reverse normal phase chromatography but otherwise there will be the formation of you know dipole dipole interaction and the hydrogen bond with the silica with the both the compounds so i hope you must have got some idea on you know how theoretically one can analyze the properties of the compound or its functional groups and can relate with the columns functional groups and then understand the probable interactions and based on to that you can narrow down the column selection followed by experimentation and then having the right column in your method thank you very much for watching this video and i will meet you soon with such kind of very useful and informative videos till then take care and bye bye see you soon